Oh, hi. I didn't see you there. My name's Michael, and you're watching Just Make Game. February is a very short month. It's gone by very quickly. We've had a couple of sick days and other distractions like that to deal with this month. But unlike last month, we're actually quite organised with the video. So you're going to be hearing from Haley a bit more this month than you have previously. Um, the reason you haven't really heard from Haley so far is I normally make and edit the videos when Haley is working her second job. So that's just kind of how it goes. This month Haley's been working on enemy designs, assets and animations, and I've been working on weapons, particle effects and AI. We think we may also actually have a solution to what we should name our god in commandment. For me, this month started with putting some of the new assets I had created into the game. This is my first time ever using Game Maker, so it was a nice easy task to get me started. Mike talked me through the whole process, from exporting GIFs from Pixel Edit, creating new objects, setting the center of the object so our placeholder shadow system works, and listing the objects in a script to initialize each set of assets. It was a little scary at first editing the Game Maker file because I just had these visions of me clicking on the wrong thing and just deleting everything Mike had already implemented and worked so hard to put in the game. So what I did is I just made sure I asked a million questions. I checked with Mike a lot of the time to start with to make sure I was doing the right thing and not clicking on anything bad or deleting anything. And um, it turns out I didn't delete the game. So I was pretty proud of myself. Once some of the assets were in the game, we realised that the perspective was looking a bit off on some of the objects. The view we're using is loosely known as a three-quarter view, where you can see the top and the front of the object at the same time. When I'm working in pixel edit with no background for context, I might think, awesome, this object is done, I'm finished with it. But then when it's put in the game world, it's easy to see that the perspective's a bit off, and I'll need to go back and tweak the object to make the perspective match with what we've already done. It's getting easier to get the perspective right the more assets I create. Like everything, it takes a bit of practice. Mike is doing a great job of teaching me different aspects of game creation, and I actually just spent one day this past month looking over his shoulder while he implemented some particle effects and weapon sprites. He is very patient and took time to explain what he's doing and why, and when I started to get a grip on the process, he'd stop and ask me what to do next so he could make sure I was properly understanding the process. He's a really good teacher. I'm not going to jump in and start coding anytime soon, but I'm slowly starting to understand better how code works, and we can look through Mike's code and work out what's going on. I can now listen to a problem Mike might be having with implementing something and try to help problem solve and make suggestions that aren't totally useless and help in a little way to work through a problem every now and then. I've spent a lot of time this month creating a boss design and doing the animations for it so we can get a feel of how these enemies are going to work in the game. There is no guarantee this enemy will end up in the final version of the game, but it's giving me a really valuable lesson on how to design and how to animate enemies from scratch. My prior animation experience is very limited. Three years ago I rotoscoped a five second animation of a grebe eating a fish. It's terrible, like it's pretty bad and scratchy. Recently I animated the clothing layer for our cultist enemies running and rolling animations, but that was pretty easy because I already had the basic body animations to work from that Mike had done. Creating and animating a giant floating skull that chomps as an attack from scratch has been hard work for me. I started with the basic front and side view. Then I chucked those out and started again because it wasn't really good enough and the perspective was a bit off. Then when I had a front and side view I was happy with, I added shading. The next step was to roughly block out how the basic animation would look in bright colours, so I could easily see each part of the skull. Once I was happy with that, I cleaned up the animations and fixed the shape and size of each of the frames to match the original design. Now I've started adding in the detail and shading for each of the frames and I still have a way to go on it. The hardest part of this process is that I feel like I'm working too slowly. I get discouraged sometimes and I'll stop and think, this looks like shit. I have no idea what I'm doing, I'm not pulling my weight and I'm no good at the game thing. Then I'll turn to Mike and tell him how crap I am and he'll tell me to stop being silly, that I'm really doing a good job and yes I'm a bit slow at the moment but I'll get faster. 
He reminds me that he was slow when he started development of Bannerman and it's really reassuring to hear that this is just part of the process. I think I struggle with this because my background is in art and I think that I should be able to do any art related thing really quickly and really well. The first time, no exceptions. But that's just not the case. As with anything, practice makes perfect and I'll get faster in time. Alrighty, so on my end this month, I started by implementing all the objects that I spoke about last month and I tweaked the generation algorithm some more so that they tend to generate in a bit more of a logical fashion. They're all looking really nice. Uh, my favourite are the giant leafy plants that are bursting through the floor everywhere. I've also implemented some particle effects for each of the destructible objects. So if you smash up a book, then pages go flying everywhere. If you cut up a plant, you get splinters and leaves and so on and so forth. I've also begun an implementation of ranged attacks. Our test character now has a musket complete with the ridiculously huge plume of smoke out the front. Uh, there will be a variety of ranged attacks in commandment, ranging from pistols to rifles to slings and blowguns. Uh, I'm not super happy on the method of rotating the weapon around. Uh, I will be looking into fixing this up in the future and changing it up a bit. At the moment it, it's functional, but it's not finished. Basically what happens at the moment is rotating the weapon sprite uses sub-pixel movement. So this means that it can move and rotate in a fashion that's not technically true or, or possible in proper pixel art. Now, of course, I can render the whole game in, a, in the fashion of a true pixel art game, so I can constrain the resolution down, render everything to that, and then blow it up to the, uh, like the monitor resolution. But I do want to use sub-pixels for certain things in the game, like having a smooth motion on the camera. So the camera itself can move, you know, a quarter of a pixel, even though that's not really possible. Um, but I don't want the gun to rotate a quarter of a pixel, so I'm obviously going to have to bug around with this and come up with some sort of solution, but uh, at the moment it's, it's okay. The most interesting and involved thing that I worked on in February was the enemy awareness AI. The enemy AI in Commandment is reliant on vision and hearing, and it will only detect the player if it's reasonable to do so. Uh, it's important for me from a game design perspective that the enemies act and react in a reasonable way. You should have a clear idea as to why an enemy is doing something, how they react to stimuli, and therefore you can use that knowledge against them to your advantage. Now obviously these vision cones that you see here will not be visible to the player, they're all just there for testing purposes, but it's important to note that the detection is not purely based on line of sight. Enemies will be alerted when directly spotting the player, but they will also be alerted by spotting an already alerted enemy, and also by sound. So different weapons and abilities will have different detection ranges. Um, so if you fire off a giant musket, then you're going to bring everyone in the surrounding area down on you in a big heap. But if you use a blowgun or you throw a rock or something like that, then you really only get to alert the guy that you're throwing it at. Now the reason that we're bothering to implement systems like this in an action roguelike RPG, you know, a sort of genre that typically doesn't have really many systems like this at all, is that I want to give the player a variety of options when playing through Commandment. I, like, I want a stealth build to be a viable thing to attempt. Um, I, want, I want a person to try a, a ghost run where they basically try to avoid detection the entire time. Likewise, I want players to be able to get armed to the teeth with very loud and very damaging weapons and just smash their way straight through the front door of the enemy. I want different playstyles to feel drastically different from one another. Um, obviously, a challenge will be balancing these different playstyles out, but that's a job for future Michael and not for me. So we think that we've come up with a name for the god. Um, we struggled to find something that we really liked and it sounded authentic even though there's nothing authentic about um you know a big evil god thing but um we went through our shortlist and nothing really grabbed us or felt right um for the sort of i don't know the sort of feel that we want we can't just very well name him cthulhu um i did however have a, a weird sort of creepy dream about the game now i'm not gonna um go on about this because no one likes hearing anything about people's dreams but um in this the dream, the 
God didn't have a name and he had a, like a symbol. Um, and the, the thing in my dream was that you couldn't directly refer to the God, um, you had to draw its symbol. And I, I thought that was pretty cool and a pretty cool sort of fit for the mood. So we're going with that for the moment. So no name, but a symbol. It looks creepy. I kind of like it. Well, that'll do it for this month. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you next month for another episode of Just Make Game. Just right.